Need for Speed Heat or Need for Speed Unbound? This is the most frequently asked question in my streams, my DMs, and the comments section. People want to know if Unbound is actually better than Heat, and when I look back to see how I answered those questions, I realized that even I couldn't decide. I have 500 hours played in both of those games, and I couldn't pick one. What I do know is that I have a soft spot for Need for Speed Heat, because that's what led to my channel growing into what it is today. So it's kind of crazy that I didn't just have a clear answer off the top of my head. Anyways, I decided to put a list of features together, and I came up with 102 points to judge each of these games on. And then with the magic of spreadsheets, I put those together to find out once and for all which game is better. Let's go. Here it is. This is my feature list. I've broken it up into 11 categories and then listed all of the things that I would judge the game by in each category. The game that wins the most categories will be declared the better game. I also added a column for whether that feature was judged by data or my personal opinion. I think it's important to know how much of this was determined by opinion and how much of it was actual facts or data about the game. I'm going to take you through each category and tell you what factors helped me decide which game was best for the category. So starting out with the campaign, as you can see, I've given this one to Need for Speed Heat. I thought Heat's campaign was much more enjoyable and entertaining than Unbound's. Even though it provided less gameplay, I just thought the characters and cutscenes told the story better. Unbound's forced day and night cycle really turned me off, and so Heat strikes first with one category win. Next up is customization. You would think that this category would be all opinion, considering the customization is all about how you like to customize the car, but it's not. It's all data. I listed all the possible parts to customize, and by and large, the games offer the same customization. Unbound has visual effects, sounds upon victories, and samples while using Burst NOS, and it also has body part removal and full body kits. And so I gave the slight edge to it in this category. So one for Heat, one for Unbound. Moving on to car performance. Unbound actually runs away with this category. The only things I appreciate about Heat more is the extra layers of performance parts, i.e. the Ultimate and Ultimate Plus parts. And I prefer to unlock parts by leveling up as opposed to just paying for a garage upgrade like you do in Unbound. Other than that though, Unbound's car building process is far deeper and I appreciate that each engine part does something completely different to the performance of the car. Still one for Heat, and now two category wins for Unbound. All right. Let's talk about the handling model. Need for Speed Heat is much more drift heavy and Unbound gives you the choice to build your car to suit drift or grip. However, drift racing in Unbound is really not viable for the average player. It's very difficult to drift race in Unbound and because of that, I think most players right now are grip racing. Both handling models are actually quite fun to play, but the kicker for me is the burst NOS mechanic and the steep learning curve for average players. I really like that Unbound has deeper mechanics and is harder to master. So that's one for Heat and three for Unbound. And I know it looks like Unbound is running away with it, but let's talk about the cops. According to the data points I have in the cops category, one could assume that I would prefer the cops in Unbound. But I'll actually be honest, the cops in Unbound are so easy that they become a non-factor during your playthrough. They're basically just a nuisance when you're trying to complete an activity or race or whatever it is that you're doing. Not once in the campaign playthrough did I have an issue running from the cops and I struggled hard in the beginning of Heat. I know the cops in Heat were much more difficult to understand and to get away from and that to me makes them better. Heat cops made you have to concentrate and develop escape strategies and I love that. So. Here we are, Heat 2, Unbound 3. Moving on to the visuals and the art styles. This is a super subjective category and I realize I might not agree with the majority of you on this, but I really like the art style of Unbound. I love the contrast between the semi-realistic cars and the cell shaded characters and visual effects. And because of that, Unbound wins this category as well. Heat 2, Unbound 4. Now let's dive into the race data. First of all, Heat blows Unbound out of the water in terms of overall races. It has 136 races while Unbound only has 78. Both offer three different types of race events, so they're even there, and both have terrible traffic, and so they're even there. Police interference was very limited in Unbound races, so I have to give it the edge on that specific point because police in races is just annoying. But overall, it comes down to the number of races. Heat just has so many more, and so it wins this category. Heat 3, Unbound 4. 
Now let's look at the activities and collectibles. This one is simple. Need for Speed Heat's activities have replayability and Unbound's don't. I know you can drive around the map and go through a speed trap again on Unbound, but you don't get anything for it. In Need for Speed Heat, you do. So it's an easy win for Need for Speed Heat, and we have a tie ball game through eight categories. Heat 4, Unbound 4. The last three categories are multiplayer experience, the map, and the car lists. Let's talk about the least interesting one, the map. These maps are basically the same in terms of what they add to the game. They both have issues, Need for Speed Heat had clipping and unevenness, and Unbound's map really doesn't fit the driving mechanics all that well. Their sizes are similar and the variety of terrains is similar and because of that, it's a tie for this category. 5 for Heat, 5 for Unbound. Next is the multiplayer experience. Heat has the party size, and I like that the progression is combined with the solo experience, meaning you don't have to unlock all of the cars again in multiplayer. But that's honestly it. Trying to get into a race in Need for Speed Heat is a nightmare. No one accepts race invites. It feels like it's a ghost town. The race invite acceptance rate is somewhere below 10% for Heat and above 50% for Unbound. That, combined with slightly more stable servers and less bugs, netcode, and desync, gives Unbound the win for this category. Now don't freak out, I know that there are bugs in the multiplayer for Unbound, but there are far less than there were in Heat. Alright, the final category is the car list. Going into this category, we have Heat winning 5 categories and Unbound winning 6. If Heat's car list is better, then we would have a tie game. Unfortunately for Heat, it's not. Unbound's car list has 152 cars from 33 brands, and Heat has 130 cars from 33 brands. Simple math tells me that the car list for Unbound is better, and that's really the ballgame. What's crazy about this whole experiment is that for some reason my heart doesn't want me to agree with this outcome. It wants me to say Heat is better, and maybe that's because of that soft spot I spoke about earlier. I don't really know, there's just something extremely likable about Need for Speed Heat, and I can't quite put my finger on it. That being said, the results are the results, and I'm gonna stick with it. Unbound is a better game, and it's not even done being updated, so who knows where it will be in 6 months. Hopefully we get a Volume 4 update as well as the upcoming Volume 3. And lastly, make sure you leave me your vote. Which game do you think is actually better? Need for Speed Heat or Need for Speed Unbound? Thank you so much for watching. Shout out to all the Heat 5 members of the channel. I'll catch you on the next one. Trigger out.